Hi guys. I'm back. We're uh, getting back on the Admiral TV and I thought about uh, as I work on this TV kind of going through um, a circuit analysis of the TV, a theory of operation, how TV operates, and a comparison of a TV to a uh, radio. To a radio. Um, I've got a couple, three different um, schematics and, and stuff of radios that we'll, over the period of time, we'll be comparing to and comparing the circuitry of a TV uh, section by section to a uh, particular radio. And as I go through this, we'll also be talking about where I'm at on uh, getting the, the uh, uh, TV restored and stuff. I've started up in this circuit in this area here. I've um, been getting everything kind of bolted back down or he went through the IF. Uh, that was in a previous video and and the tuner. And now we're starting up in here. Uh, we got the I got the cans reinstalled after restuffing them. And uh, gotta get them hooked up uh, and replacing capacitors up here and uh, uh, Alatron's resistors. So as we go along, um, I'll be uh, showing you some of that. Um, sorry for the camera angle. Um, as things go along, we'll get a little, probably a little better at this. But uh, you know, I have been. Uh, you can see some of the new caps in there and stuff. I was thinking about restuffing them, but there are some bumblebee caps in this, and I didn't feel like uh, really uh, spending a lot of time on getting them cut open and drilled out, as I have shown on other videos I've done with some plastic encased caps. Uh, so I, I decided at this point I'll just go ahead and replace the caps, not worry about stuffing them. Uh, there's been. Uh, this is the audio section and there's been uh, 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 several of the resistors were out of tolerance in that area so I'm um, replacing quite a few of them uh, the transformer here, the audio output transformer is actually a different one as far as the main core goes I uh, did put it inside the uh, um, metal enclosure that bolts it down that was with the the TV. It happened to be virtually the same size the core and, and transformer, but the transformer in this had a open primary, and it wasn't. Uh, whenever you got a transformer open primary, they're the deepest winding in, so you got to unwind all the secondary and and wind everything out, and it's really not worth it. And I had this transformer here, which. Uh, basically specced out the same so uh, and it would fit into the uh, shell here the metal shell that bolts it down so um, I used uh, I put that on there and put it in there so now to uh, talking about TV circuits and comparing them to um, radio circuits and I thought what I would do this this on this one we're kind of going to start with one circuit that's kind of more in the center uh, of the radio coming off the uh, or, uh, of the TV slash radio uh, coming off the detector and that's uh, in a TV they call it an AGC and radio they call it AVC but they're one and the same uh, AVC automatic volume control is nothing more than an AGC automatic gain control and I'll explain why that is uh, and where the term actually came from AVC so well from from there we'll look at the uh, we'll swing around here and look up on here uh, let me zoom back out a little bit and see how that's working kind of get zeroed in here a little bit I'm going to look at the TV first. I'm going to look at where it's developed at. 
Okay, um, this is the IF strip right through here. I'm only showing part of it on the screen. We'll get to the rest of it. And here's the video detector. Just a dual diode, 6AL5. And uh, this is what's going to not only detect the video, and in this case, audio also. Well, it doesn't detect the audio, but it splits it off from the carrier. Audio actually feeds off this way and will feed up through this line up into the audio section. Uh, but this top diode is our actual detector circuit. This bottom diode, which f gets its feed from here, goes through a 120 picofarad cap and comes down. That one is our AGC. Now in radio they call it AVC. AVC is nothing but AGC. It actually is controlling gain. Um, the name AVC or automatic volume control was coined by uh, marketing at one radio manufacturer or a couple of them. Um, the exact whoever originally came up with it first is up for debate and I'm not going to get into that but needless to say it was marketing that came up with it because they felt that uh, the end user, the consumer, the people who are buying radios out there would understand automatic volume control much easier and, and, be, and be able to sell that point to them much easier than automatic gain control but an AVC, automatic volume control, is really nothing more than an AGC. So anyway, on the TV, this diode is going to pick up the signal, and the IF signal, and it's going to detect it, and it's going to come down through here, and we need a load resistor, and that's a 680K going to ground. This gives us a negative voltage, DC voltage here that is relative to the same strength as the signal so whatever strength that signal that's been detected will be how negative this voltage is and that will come down through here go through a filter we need a filter to take the ripple off that DC and we'll feed it along this line so let me zoom or rotate here just a little bit So we're coming through this line, we come up, there is a secondary filter here that will finish uh, bleeding off any left of uh, IF frequency that's on there. Run it up and into this tube, the 6AU6, which is the second video IF amplifier. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if this is a real strong signal, we have a lot of negative voltage produced. A lot of negative voltage gives us a great, uh, uh, a lot of negative on the grid. A lot of negative, high negative voltage on the grid means we don't get as much current going through the tube. When the current is reduced going through the tube, then the gain of the tube is reduced. If the signal is weak, then we get a low negative voltage, not near as negative voltage or not as much negative voltage which means this grid is not as negative which means more current flows through the tube consequently meaning that the tube amplifies more which means more gain so automatic gain control and this works on in this case the second IF the first IF if we move along here you'll see that comes through here comes up another filter and feeds into the first IF and it's not done there it'll go through a voltage divider here and I'll get to that in a minute <coughs> excuse me and I need to move the screen over on the computer it will continue to feed let me back her up just a go up
it will continue to feed through no resistor here um, may or may not have a cap here and then feed up up through the coil and into the first into this RF amplifier which is a tuned out RF it's the first stage of amplification in the front end right off the antenna and in this case it's going to be controlling the gain of the RF now something that I want to talk about well I'll get to in a minute these uh, let's talk about these resistors here what they're there for is to limit this negative voltage and the primary reason is, is it's to reduce it a little bit because that RF tube doesn't need and is biased the amount according to its characteristics doesn't need as much negative voltage as a 6AU6 that's in the IF amplifier section so since the tubes are slightly different then we've got to adjust our negative voltage and that's why M2 resistors are there and including this resistor here now one other thing that I want to discuss is about SAMs themselves and I'm going to try to zoom in and hopefully you can see this okay you got a dotted line so it's pretty obvious that that may or may not be in all sets but not all parts will be dotted line like this but they, the ones that some will have this little circle with a line through it right here you'll see this in Sam's manuals in Sam's uh, literature Sam's photo fact what that means is any part that's got that on there means that when you go to the parts listing and look that part up it'll read off and off to the very right of the parts listing it'll state um, something about a note you know note one, note two, note three, whatever or it may have an asterisk or something like that but in any case what it means is that in this case it means that they talk about some models did not use this capacitor and some did but there are other instances where if I come across here and can find it and it's right there that 1k resistor right here it has a note on it in the parts listing that talks about a different value some models had a different value of resistor so if you're reading a SAM schematic and stuff and you see one of these little circles with a line through it it means that that part could change in value on certain models certain run numbers whatever and that what you need to do is go to the the part of the SAM service literature where they list the parts and in there it will have uh, more information. It will have a note on it that will tell you uh, say like the 1K and some models had a um, I don't know 2.2K uh, or something like that. I didn't look it up to see what exactly it is but but I just wanted to state that that has nothing to do with what we're talking about but I, I just wanted to talk about that because it, it's in here now we'll back up a little bit here we'll kind of review a little bit and let me bring the computer screen back over and in essence in review and I know I got it zoomed out but the second diode in here or the other diode is the AGC diode it gets a signal from the 120 picofarad cap here it drops a certain voltage across this load resistor gives us a negative voltage which is filtered this is the primary filter to take off the ripple feeds that DC negative DC to the grids in this case of the first two IF tubes and the RF tube back in the tuner and the relationship here how it works is that a stronger signal more powerful uh, TV station whatever means that we get more negative voltage 
being developed. Greater negative voltage means less current going through the tube, which means less amplification or less gain. A weaker station means less negative voltage coming down through, being developed across the load resistor. Less negative voltage to the tube means more current going through the tube and that means more gain, more amplification. So automatic gain control. Now, how does that relate to a radio? Well, let's look at a radio. Make sure I'm zoomed fully out. <coughs> and we'll probably zoom in just a little bit. Just to kind of get it in focus here. On this radio here, this one, one of the diodes is not used. It is connected here, connected back to the cathode, which this whole line here actually is ground, feeds down, and feeds to ground, down over here, right at the very end of my very small part of the screen, very end. Um, I could probably rotate that. There we go. So that line, that ground just comes up, comes across comes up here and all through this all this is ground so that diode is just being grounded we only use one diode in in this circuit so this diode is going to play double duty it's going to be the detector as well as uh, the AVC diode uh, so anyway we feed a signal through and now the detected signal will go this way, feed through the phono radio switch, feed through a capacitor to the volume control, which then feeds through another capacitor to the grid of the first audio, and then of course that on through until uh, we get to the speaker through the final output and everything. But another part of that signal comes down and we feed it across a load resistor. R10 here is a 270K, that's our load resistor. The same thing as what was in the TV. Identical. And I get it here. There we go. That's the same thing right here. R31, 680K. That resistor and this resistor do exactly the same thing. They create a voltage drop across, gives us, develops a negative voltage here from that detected signal and that feeds our AVC. Now on this radio it's a little more complex because it takes two routes. It splits right here. One route goes this way and one route goes down and goes this way. If we follow this route, it comes down, we go through a 2.2 meg resistor and a 0.05 capacitor. That's our filter. Same filter that was in the, in the TV, same basic theory. Except a little different value sizes, but it does the same thing. It's clearing off the ripple off that AVC voltage. Now down here, it's going to feed to the I-tube, which allows the I-tube to operate you know, the stronger the radio station, more negative voltage comes in here, the more the I-tube um, adjusts itself so that you know that you're getting tuned in on, on to a, a strong radio station. The other route, it feeds over this way, comes around, comes up, feeds over here. There's a, a resistor here that it feeds through, comes up, feeds through the coil, L2 and back over to the grid of the 6U7. So, what's going on here is a strong radio station produces a strong signal which is detected. That strong signal creates a large negative voltage drop. Large negative voltage fed through, up, into the tube. A lot of negative voltage on that grid 
means not as much current flows through the tube, not as much current flow in the tube, the tube don't amplify as much, doesn't have as much gain. If the station is weak, then we have a weak signal, weak detected signal, weak voltage, not much negative voltage, feeds through, little negative voltage or small negative voltage value means a lot more current flows across the tube, through the tube, which means more amplification or more gain. <coughs> Automatic gain control. Now what about the other section? Because we got a couple other tubes in here. Well the other section feeds through another 2.2 meg, comes up, comes up through here to the IF tubes grid and it operates the same as the RF. Strong station, a lot of negative voltage, little current going across the tube, not as much application, low gain. Weak station, not much negative voltage, a lot of current going through, a lot of amplification, a lot of gain. The other part of this will feed on and it goes around about path because it's going to go through the switch. The one, one direction it splits here, one direction it comes down, feeds across, comes down here, down here, we got a secondary filter here, a 0.05 and 2.2 megs. We go back up, we feed through this coil, back down, coming down, coming down, feed through here, that feeds uh, um, through the switch, which feeds up, comes across, up, and back over to the grid of the mixer tube. So that the mixer tube is also being controlled by the AVC voltage, and so if we got a strong station, we have a lot of negative grid voltage, not much current going across the tube because it's reduced, very low amplification, low gain. Weak station, not much negative voltage here on the grid, that means more current goes through the tube, which means greater gain, greater amplification. So consequently, we're feeding three tubes in this circuit. We're feeding the RF, tuned RF, the front end RF tube, the mixer oscillator tube, and the IF tube. And we're developing that with one diode, drop across the resistor, develops our negative voltage, we got some various filters in here that is filtering that out, uh, filtering any ripple on it and controlling it so that we have a nice DC negative voltage going to the tubes. If that station is strong, we have a lot of negative voltage being developed that goes to the tubes, reduces their gain because the current going through them is reduced. If it's a weak station, we don't have as much negative voltage, so then more current goes to the tubes, more gain. And now one other one I want to show you. Here you see only one diode being used. In the TV there was two diodes. We're going to show you a radio, which happens to be, in this case, and there's a lot of radios, but I just picked, came across this one real quick, which is a Philco 3810. And we'll show you where in radios they do use two diodes with a capacitor to operate. Let's see if I can kind of get that. Hopefully you guys can see it all right. Um, I can zoom in. First to the detection circuit. <coughs> Excuse me. In this case, we have the same thing as in the TV. We have one diode, which happens to be this top diode right here, which is acting as our main detector um, for our audio, which is going to come down and off the screen is the volume control. This is the filter for the detector and, uh, and stuff. But this signal is split right here at the 110 picofarad. So uh, part of it goes through this diode for detection, but this part goes through this diode for AVC, 
which uh, you can also call AGC now that you know that it actually controls gain and this will come down through here and we'll uh, go down a little bit maybe zoom out just a little bit um, so you can see more of the circuit but it comes down and it creates a drop across the one meg resistor gives us a nice negative voltage here and we've got a one meg and if we follow it over we also got a 0.05 that's our filter that will take the ripple off so that we have a nice DC negative voltage being fed up through the coil to the IF amp if you follow it over it comes over here and feeds up through this coil and this coil to the grid of the mixer oscillator tube or detector tube first detector works the same principle strong signal produces a large negative voltage large negative voltage to either one of these both these tubes on their grids means they don't get as much current going through them which means neither one has as much amplification or gain a weak station means not near as much negative voltage being produced going to the grids of either one of the tubes or both the tubes which means more current flows across the tube more gain more amplification again automatic gain or uh, the coin name automatic volume control because the end result what you hear out the end is the volume uh, and I might as well mention this because it may come up in the comments a question you see that this resistor is not actually going directly to ground it goes through a resistor here and resistor here and ground what that's for is Fickle did this a lot is to supply a certain set amount of negative voltage being developed here that will come across the resistor, resistor so that <coughs> in times when you are in between station you have or very or even no antenna hooked up or very low uh, weak antenna hooked up in any case um, we're still supplying a set negative baseline negative grid voltage to these tubes that's being developed down at this point here it'll just since the grid doesn't draw much uh, virtually no current then whatever's uh, developed here is shown here and if there's not really any signal to be detected up in here on the diodes then I'm not going to produce any negative there so this gives a preset um, zero signal negative uh, grid voltage uh, biasing voltage for the two tubes. Uh, the engineers at Felco felt necessary that, to do that and a lot of Felco radios back in the 30s this was done this way. So I, I wanted to mention that but otherwise the circuit works the same. Uh, you can basically see this to ground and when the diode gets there is a signal on it it detects a signal that produces a DC with that is developed across here we get a negative voltage drop across this resistor negative voltage here filter it and run that negative to the grids of the two tubes if it's a strong station then the negative voltage is large and quite negative and that means the tubes cannot um, conduct as much when there's not much current going through them then they don't have as much gain or amplification. When the station's weak, then we have the reverse. We don't produce near as much near as much negative voltage, so the negative voltage is quite low. More current flows through the tube. More current flowing through the tube translates into more gain, greater amplification. Now, one other thing that I want to dismiss here about ABC, AGC whatever name you want to call it whether it's in a TV or radio <coughs> in radios it was developed first because they didn't have TVs yet it was developed more for 
uh, the problem was stations that would fade due to changing conditions in the atmosphere and uh, and the such so that as you're listening to a radio station it may be coming in strong at first and then kind of weaken down fade away and then come back and just keep doing this floating back and forth between strong and weak that was the whole purpose of this automatic gain control or AVC control was to take care of that problem it was never intended for you to tune in a very weak station say today in modern day times a far away station that's weak and then set your volume to that level so that you can hear it and then turn tune uh, adjust the tuner and, and tune in a station that is real close right next to you that is strong and expect the volume to stay the same level it, it will not it has not the capability of doing that its capability is dealing more with fading in and out fading radio stations or um, signals really generally whether it was TV or radio that's what it was really intended for uh, so I wanted to get that pointed out that it will not work very good if you are got a real strong station that's in the town you live in and a weak station that's say 100-200 miles away or further um, and you're trying to expect the darn thing to hold the same volume for both stations. It, it's just not going to happen. It goes beyond its scope ability to do that. I mean, there's so much gain I can get out of a tube. I can take this grid to virtually zero. That's going to give me the maximum amount of current going through the tube, basically. That's the strongest the tube can get. Or I can take that thing only to a certain level negative. Beyond that level negative, the tube is cut off, and it, and it literally just shuts down. Nothing gets through it. So those are my limits. I cannot go beyond that. So I, I wanted to point that out. So don't expect miracles out of it. But for what it was intended for, it works really, really good. So anyway, that's really the the nutshell of it. Um, whether it's in a radio and called an AVC, which is really nothing more than an AGC because that's what it's doing, it's controlling gain, or it's in a TV and we call it AGC, it's the same thing. It works the same way. We detect a signal. Detecting means we just you know take it, rectify it across a diode. We develop a voltage from it by a load resistor. We filter it and then we feed it to the tubes. It's a negative voltage. If the station's strong, we have a strong negative voltage going to the grids of the tubes that it's hooked to which means then they're more negative those grids being more negative less current goes through those tubes their gain goes down their amplification goes down if it's a weak station not near as much negative voltage developed not as much negative on the grids means more current flows through the tube more current flowing the tube means greater gain greater amplification whether it's in a TV or in a radio. It's the same identical thing. Now we're done with this. There's not much else I can say about it. I probably will not touch back on it unless there's questions about it and if there's enough questions I will do a follow-up video. <coughs> Where are we going from this? Well what we're going to do at this point is we're going to start with the front end and work our way through. This is the tuner, this is the front end of the TV. We're going to compare that to the front end of a couple three radios. So here's this, this is the same thing as this and this. So we're going to compare the two, talk about their extreme similarities and their differences. Once we get through that, we'll move into the IF and we'll just keep going through.
the various circuits, comparing them to a radio, and looking at the similarities and the differences. We're going to discuss that a TV is a superheterodyne receiver, just like this radio is, and a lot of radios that you will work on um, will be superheterodyne radios. TV is no different, it's a superheterodyne receiver. <coughs> we'll look at similarities and differences, we'll talk about um, the circuit similarities, circuit differences. We'll talk about things like what's L3 here for and L4. What's these two coils doing? And we'll talk about all the various components, why they're there, and how these here and this cap and this cap you probably have seen in FM radios. So at least higher end FM radios. So we'll talk about that. Plus, we'll continue on, we'll also talk about stuff that is strictly TV, such as the picture tube. We're going to talk about how the various different ways of focusing is done. And um, we're going to talk about aluminized screens and non-aluminized screens. And what advantages and uh, what advantages of that is. And ion traps and the lack of ion traps and, and so forth and so on. We're going to, you know, talk about the sync circuits and the various, uh, how they operate and the theories of those. So anyway, this, this is going to be a long duration thing and I'm going to stick to it, hold it out there. I'm sure that probably towards the end of it, the viewer uh, numbers will be down pretty low because uh, a lot of people lose interest. But I'm going to try to hold your interest. Uh, but the primary thing I want to do is uh, a lot of it will have a lot of similarities uh, in theory and the theory of operation to radios. Uh, basically TVs came out of radio. So uh, the very first TVs used very similar exact circuitry. Uh, then they developed uh, better means of working with it but they were working with the existing tubes and existing components and existing knowledge at the time. So, uh, so just stick with me and hopefully we'll all learn something and uh, I hope you enjoy it and um, I want to thank you for watching, thank you for your comments, uh, I try my best to try to answer some of them anyway and I want to uh, uh, thank uh, my new, uh, I got some new subscribers. I want to thank you guys for coming aboard. Um, if you like these videos, uh, give them a thumbs up down below. And uh, that will let me know that you're enjoying them. And uh, if, you're, if you just happen to cross this channel and you like what you see and everything, go ahead and subscribe. Um, I talk about a lot of different things and work on a lot of different stuff in, in tube equipment. So, with that being said, I guess uh, there's not much else to say. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments. <coughs> and if they're lengthy or a lot of them, I will do a follow up to answer them. So, again, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, sorry about the length. Um, my typical videos seem to be long because I don't know how to shut up. So I'll see you guys on the next video. You all have a good day. Uh, at least the weather seems to be turning nicer. So um, see you guys on the next video.